All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Or welcome for the first time today. <laughs> so I have a problem and I want to get your, this is a real long rim problem. Okay. So I've, I've been having the whole winter, I've been having these little ants in my house, you know, and I'm not, wasn't really sure where they were living. Um, you know, and I have to like do all these things to like clean up all the time. And, you know, the cat food, I have to feed them, but then take the food away so the ants don't get in them and all this stuff, right? So I was in between classes, I was I was watering my money plant. And guess where they've been living? Uh, there are approximately, if I can count, it feels like there's about 3,000 ants on my kitchen floor right now because I watered the plant and they're like, ah, shit. And they all just ran out. So now I have a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I thought they were just living in the computer, right? So now I got a problem. Now I have 3,000 beings taking refuge in my house, <laughs> living in my plant. And I don't know what to do. I can't put the plant outside because it's winter time, right? But I certainly don't want 3,000 ants in my kitchen. Anyway, maybe you guys could come up with a solution for me. So, um, so where we were in, we're really just starting Lam Rim, right? We're just getting way, way, way started. And there's a, we're getting into an explanation of why we're actually starting with shamatha first and not um, going with the first steps of the Lama. Because the way Pabonka Rinpoche taught this book, which I've said probably every class, is instead of starting, he started from the very first part of the Lama Rim, taught the whole thing, and then at the end says, look, now I'm going to teach you about meditation. Now I'm going to teach you about emptiness. And then now you need to go all the way back to the beginning and meditate on each of the steps. And so the way that this was originally taught to us was let's start with the meditation and emptiness first. And then let's go into the other steps of the long run. Use the skills of meditation, use the skills of shamatha. And then let's apply that to emptiness. And then as we're working with that, let's then start putting other objects there, like leisure and fortune, like the difficulty of attaining this one, this life as a human, things like that. Right. So it's kind of a cool way of, of approaching it. Instead of, instead of, how do I say it? Instead of walking along a path that would get, you know, from the beginning and, and taking you there, right? And just going, da, 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 da. and then eventually reaching shamatha, having direct perception of emptiness, becoming a Buddha, et cetera, right? Easy, right? What if we start with the goal in mind? What if we start practicing the goal? Right? What if we start practicing the meditations? Let's start practicing shamatha. Let's even get into shamatha. Let's start putting emptiness in there. Right? And then, ta da! Now you then walk all those other steps and you walk them very easily because you understand their emptiness and you understand how to focus on them. 
like you could sit in meditation and think about the leisure and fortune, the down, uh, down joy you have, right? The leisure and fortune of a, in your life. You can think about how difficult it was to attain this lifetime. Because if you understand emptiness and the karma, you're going to be like, well, shit, this was like one in a gazillion chance I was born as a human. I could have been born as any one of those 3,000 ants over there living in a pot. You guys want to see? <laughs> okay. There's the pot on the, uh, can't see. Dang. It's the pot's over there on the ground by the door. Okay. 3,000 ants. Okay. You could have been born in a, you could have been born in a money plant in the dirt. Okay. <laughs> and then some monster comes, some monster comes along and pours a tsunami of, of water into you. Not thinking there were ants in there. I probably killed a bunch, which really sucks. And now they're, they're all freaking out. You never left your pot. You've just lived in that pot. And all of a sudden a tsunami comes and you start running out. Everyone's freaking out, right? That's one of the 3,000 births happening in my house right now, right? <laughs> Those are the, the beings I can see, the ones I can't see, right? How many of them can't I see? I didn't even know they were there. That's great. Um, but the, the, the be able to understand karma so well that you recognize that your life was is so unique and it's so unique that you're even here listening about it. right? To be able to be in a class to listen? Like, how many millions of people are living in their own pots? That every single thing that happens to them is like a tsunami. They can't think about Lam Rim. They can't think about their next life. They can't think about the things they're doing. They're just trying to survive. And they run out of the pot and freak out. Because someone poured some water on them. And that's how you live Lam Rim, guys. Lam Rim isn't this magical thing out in the universe that like, oh, I'm going to go step on the path. No, it's in your kitchen. ACI 10 class four was all about the kitchen. This Lam Rim... The plant was sitting right there, okay? It was three feet away from this computer. That's Lom Rim. Now there's 3,000 animals in my house running around, right? So we're going to learn how to get there. We're going to learn how to develop this tool of shamatha and what it does for us. So today's class is really about the benefits of shamatha, Okay. And it's really about the, it's about what it will do for us and why we should start meditating and start meditating now and not waiting until tomorrow. All right. So here we go. Let's go into our text for today. Here we go. All right. Mm -hmm. hold on francisco i think i got it to work i did yes <laughs> i can use two screens here and see my notes at the same time sweet okay so last night before we get there <laughs> this is relevant last night we had a um we had a potluck dinner for all the people here in sedona for ysi we're off we're off on these two days it's not really days off it's just days off from geshe michael teaching and i was preparing my classes all afternoon yesterday and then a friend came over who we ended up cooking dinner it was really sweet um and then we went over to this potluck and so we're having you know we're having a nice dinner and my friend had taken me 
who had driven me and I had made a big deal about wanting to drive myself. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to want to leave early because I need to prepare my class. <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 don't worry. You know, whenever you want to leave, I'll, you know, we can just go. And I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, she's having too much fun. I can't like, <laughs> I can't take someone away from the fun because I need to go prepare mom ran for tomorrow. Right. So I, um, I had my computer with me. So I just sat down in the middle of this party. It was so much fun. Everybody's dancing, by the way, Aldo Osiris was there and he was playing his brother's music. <laughs> okay. And, um, Osiris walks in and Osiris is like, you guys are boring. This isn't a party. And I say, Osiris, this is an American old person's party where we just talk and we drink tea. And he was like, I'm older than you. He's not, but he was like, I'm older than you. You're such a grandpa. We're going to party. So he puts on music, his music, right? And of course, everyone starts dancing and having a lot of fun. Um, which is also part of Lam Rim. This is part of life. You need to have fun sometimes, right? But I'm like, I need to finish this up. And so I'm like, I can have fun and dance and hang out with my friends. And I just opened up my computer and I was translating last night, right? And then all the people, annoying people were coming up to me and being like, Tim, you're working too hard. And like, they're kicking me and they're telling me to dance. And I'm like, I was actually thinking, I wonder where this is coming from. <laughs> like, why are they annoying me right now? You know, but why am I telling you the story? I'll, I'll give, I'll give you a hundred. This is, this is Lam Rim. Okay. This is Lam Rim. Why am I telling you this story? A hundred dollars. You guys are smart enough. You can figure it out. Wow. Wow. No one has any guesses? Not even one? Well, that's Janet had an answer. That's not quite right, though. Not even in one answer? No, no. No, cancel the. Oh, oh, nope. Sorry, Christian got it. All right, Christian, give me your PayPal. Christian said, if you have shamatha, you're not disturbed. Okay. I don't, I did not, I did do not have shamatha. Okay. <laughs> I was not in shamatha during this party. Okay. But I was able to sit in the middle of all my friends having fun, listening to really good music. Osiris's brother is an amazing DJ. And I just, I went into some weird ass zone of translation last night, right? And I was like, the microscope was on and I just was like translating all this stuff, right? Uh, my friend, another, my friend was, uh, was watching me do it. And he was like, what? And I was like, shut up, <laughs> like, leave me alone. I was very, I was very kind about it. He was actually helping me a little bit. But it was this thing where I was like surrounded by what looked like distractions. And I was just a bam, doing the thing that was most necessary in the moment. What would serve the most people? Translating Lam Rim while watching angels dance. Get it? You see? So it's like developing this skill. And I did it fast too. Like normally it takes me like three times longer than what it took me that last night, right? Because I went into a, a zone of concentration that the seeds opened in a very beautiful way. And I'm like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, <laughs> right? Living Lam Rim, you're living it. Like in the whole point of all these long classes, <laughs> it's going to go on for 15 years, you know, translating all this stuff is to be able to, see the teachings in the moment that it's happening for you. Uh, 
good morning. So that's how you, that, so that's what we're trying to get to. So like you can be a surrounded by all of those people and then bam, go in. Right. And then be like, wow, I didn't know I could translate that well. Right. <laughs> you pat yourself on the back. And then when you're done, you know, you just get up and then you have fun. Like, and I just had fun, you know, and then when we were done, we went home. Right. That was it. You know, of course, people were looking at me and being like, you know, you're trying too hard. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. All right. Where are we? So where were we? Oh, we were talking about where we were is we were talking about how different traditions view shamatha, whether it's a, a valuable thing or an invaluable thing. And basically we said, all these people who think it's invaluable. You're wrong. Sorry. <laughs> right. And we think it's valuable. And that story, the reason I told that story is because how valuable is that, right? How valuable is it to go into total chaos and be calm, collected, concentrated, right? You know, what is, is that? And that, was, that wasn't chaos. That was a lot of fun, but it, it transfers to chaos too. Well, Barbara, you, you have the good seeds to be able to tune it out. <laughs> the fact that you're able to not even pay attention to it. So it's like you're able to push it out. Um, the violence thing is... Uh, we, we, we live in a culture that is entertained by violence. We live in a culture that's entertained by divisive speech, by criticism, right? Um, it's a big, big environmental karma problem. Uh, let's think about it. So we're talking about the benefits of shamatha. So here we go. Let's get into the next. This The next benefit is actually a lot of fun. All right. So next line, here's the next line we're gonna start reading. Is that where we're supposed to be? Yes, right there. And let's call on who wants to read? Hmm. How about Pei Ling? Let's read this next sentence. Choke. 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 Huh? Knock. Knock. Put a k at the end. Knock. Knock. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. E. Mm, what is this? K. K. So. So. Mm hmm. No. Mm hmm. Yong. Ah, that, 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 that's confusing. Jung. Jung. Uh huh. Yi. To. Mm hmm. Ba cheng po. Nam mi. Yi la. Ke la. Ke la. She's doing a great job. Why? Because she's <laughs> learned that some letters are silent and some letters aren't. And she's just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you get me right. I'm just guessing. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And that's that's how we learn. We and by saying things wrong, we then will say them correctly. Right? No, no, I, I have to find some I have to find time to learn Totava class. Well, you're you're class. learning because you're saying it wrong and then you're being you're hearing it correctly. So good job. Okay. okay. Thank you. So here we go. This is a cool sentence, and we'll probably spend 15 minutes on it. By well, the next two, about 15 minutes. So, Dimena, if you don't reach shamatha, okay, we're referring back to the stuff in the beginning. 
if you don't achieve it, if you don't achieve single pointed focus. Okay. Now we'll go to the end of the sentence. Mike, it won't arise, which is what literally means. It won't be born. It won't happen. Okay. The great realizations. Okay. Tokpa chenpo, right? Great realizations. The great benefits, right? The great things that come from what things? What things are the realizations coming from? First of all, Tongni emptiness. The emptiness on the, the realizations that come from emptiness from studying sutra. Right? So without shamatha, you cannot reach these deep realizations of emptiness on the sutric path, on sutra, in the open teachings, okay? And not only that, and you won't be able to realize the, the you won't be able to come to the realizations that come from meditating on the secret teachings, not, right? And then it uses two really cool words, which you need to learn. Okay, there's very few words that I would say you need to learn. Well, you need to learn all of them. But <laughs> that's the fun part. I'm going to tell you this all the time. You just need to learn this one word. <laughs> and then you're going to eventually learn all the words. So, kesok. Kesok. All right. This is, a, this is a, an abbreviation. It's an abbreviation for kerim and sokrim. Kerim. Oh, so the let's let's go to this thing, which I'm going to do. Where is it? Nope, not right there. Uh oh, there it is. Okay, just so you guys can see it. We're gonna put on a whiteboard, just so it goes into the the record, all right? It's short for K-Rim and Sokrim, all right? What does Rim mean? If you don't know what this one word means, you're fired. <clears throat> Lam Rim, thank you. <laughs> okay, path, right, path, the path, right? Nope. Far, false. Is it steps or is it path? Which one is it? You guys are confusing yourselves. Lam rim. Which one is path and which one is steps? <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. <laughs> you guys don't know. You're all fired. <laughs> You're, <laughs> you don't even know what you're studying. You're fired. Okay. Lam is path. All right. The path. Rim are, we oftentimes translate rim as steps. Okay. But it also can mean stages. Right. So in the sense of like the stages of the path, like we call it steps because it's, it's a nicer, fun, you know, translation, but Rim can mean like a um, various stages. Like if you have, like if you're learning mathematics, right? You first learn addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Then you learn some geometry and then you learn some and then you learn some things like algebra, right? And then you learn things like calculus. Right. Then you learn differential equations. Right. Each of those are stages. In order to get to the next stage, you have to have the first stage. Right. In order to understand algebra, you need to understand multiplication and division. To understand multiplication and division, you need to understand addition and subtraction. Right. So without those fundamentals, you can't get to the end. And that's why it's called Lam Rim, the path, the steps. Right. So the words here are Kerim and Sokrim. 
Naki Kerim, Naki Sokrim. And those are the two primary divisions of the secret teachings, Kerim and Sokrim. So what are those two divisions? And it's really important to know what those divisions are in a general sense. I know you don't see the screen. I'm telling you what they are. Two major divisions of the secret teachings of Vajrayana. Karim, fine. All right, guys, you win. Here's the screen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Karim and Sokrim. There they are. You win. <laughs> right. Naki Karim. Naki Sokrim. Right. And so we oftentimes shorten. The cool thing about Tibetan and the most challenging thing about Tibetan is that we oftentimes you have to know what the full form is. And then they do a lot of abbreviations. So without knowing the full form, it's kind of hard to translate because you don't know what the full form is. So then you just get random words sometimes. So that's why you just have to listen in class for 10 years and then eventually you'll become a translator. <laughs> so Karim and Sokrim, what are those two major divisions? The first major division, Karim, is the first stage of the secret teachings. And this is when you're doing practices to meet the angels, right? You're doing the practices to create the divine around you, to be able to see it, to be able to create the karma to generate it, right? And it's so important that I need to grab something, the pen, okay? <laughs> right? You're generating the karma to see the things around you as divine. You're generating the karma, Karim. It's creation. It translates as creation stage. All right. You're generating the karma, the seeds, to be able to see the things around you in a special way. Right. You're generating those seeds to see. It's not like the world around you contains angels from their own side, contains divinity from its own side, contains Buddhas from their own side. It's not like that. It never was and never will be. And that's the reason why it can be. Thank you, Diamond Cutter Sutra. All right. If they were there on their own, by themselves, independent of you, they couldn't exist because then they would have already been there and they would have always been there and then you would have always seen it. Okay. And we can go into the argument of changing and unchanging things. Go back to ACI 4. Or 5. 4. Okay. But the idea is you're generating the karma to see things in a very holy way. Creating it. Creation stage. Okay. And that's where you're trying to create the karmas to meet those holy beings, actually meet them, bring them to you, right? Maybe they just walk in your door when you're teaching, right? And say hello, right? I don't know. Was that a normal person or was it a holy person? What seeds do you have, right? So, That's the first stage, Karim. Now, once you've met them, right? I like that, Kimberly. Creating the karma to meet Buddha. Exactly, right? Oh, so let me ask a question. I'm sorry, I get too fast sometimes. Kimberly said, creating the karma to meet Buddha. Very good, very excellent. That's definition of Karim. All right. So are you saying, Tim, that the sutra teachings aren't creating the karma to meet Buddha? Do I need to wait to get to Karim in 
the secret teachings, Nak, to create the karma to meet Buddhas. Is that what you're saying, Tim? I love logic. No, of course not. No. <laughs> It's just a highly specialized, faster way to do it. It's just another step. Okay. Nice, Jackie. It's another step. Did you literally like write that as I said it? That's cool. <coughs> um, so it's a method that once you, this is the reason why we take our time through the 18 courses, because you need to understand that the, aspects of karma and emptiness to be able to get k room to function all right so if you're if you ask your teacher for tantra for example oh please teach me tantra and they say oh not yet it means go study emptiness <laughs> okay translation go study emptiness go study karma go purify your seeds okay because there's a level of purification and that happens at these levels that if you're not ready for it, it, it's just too much, okay? Because you're moving things very, very quickly. So it's a fast track, but you gotta be ready for the fast track. You have to have that seatbelt on. You know, you gotta be like, if you're used to driving like a small, like Ford sedan, right? Through like Barcelona on the small streets, right? <coughs> and then you get into Krim, and it's this like BMW M class sport vehicle that goes from zero to 60 in three seconds. Okay. If you don't, if, if you try to drive that car thinking it's going to be like a Ford Focus, you're going to have a big problem. <laughs> the moment you touch the accelerator, you're going to crash the car if you don't know what's going on. Right. Because to get a Ford Focus to get moving, you have to push that accelerator significantly, right? <laughs> you got to put a lot of effort into it, right? But with 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 um, with KRIM, once you learn what's going on, if you're just touching that accelerator, it goes off, and then you like crash your car, right? So there's a <laughs> excuse me. So that's why translation study <laughs> translation take your time and if you are doing all the things that sutra, sutra says tantra will just happen to you anyway it's not like this thing that like is like hidden behind a closet door that like is locked and you got to enter in a secret code yeah but well, the secret code is called karma secret code is called emptiness study it study it well practice it well and then the door just opens okay and once that door opens Krim. Krim is about meeting the angels, meeting the divine beings, meeting the Buddhas, creating the karma so you could be sitting in front of a Buddha right now and have no doubts in your mind and also understand, was that a pen or a chew toy? Was that a human or a Buddha that just walked in? Right? Which one was it? What did you see? What did I see? Were they different? What did you feel? What did I feel? Like there's, okay. You have to understand this because if you, if you think a Buddha is going to walk in your door from their own side, you're wrong. Right. And if you think your teacher is your teacher, it's because the teacher is coming from you. And it doesn't, and, and anything your teacher does that you like or dislike is your fault. Okay. Does that mean you have to put up with a teacher that you don't like? Does that mean you need to put up with, you know, things that you don't like that you think are wrong? No, 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 no. Like, no, uh, that's not what I'm saying. Just because it's your fault doesn't mean you 
do nothing about it, right? But it's all coming from you. And if you don't understand that, then you can't make KRIM work. It's impossible to make KRIM work if you think that something is self-existent. Even you, even your seeds, even your prana, even your channels. Oops. Okay. So speaking of channels, the second thing is completion stage. Okay. So Krim, once you've met the angels, once you've met the divine beings, you brought them to you, what happens next? Now they teach you how to become like them. Soak rim, completion stage is what soak means. Soak means complete. Okay. <clears throat> right. Hold on a second. And so, okay. Right. So that's when they teach you how to become like them. That's when they teach you. Oh, wait, they're outside of me here. Okay. Okay. This is the fun part. Oh, they're outside of me. I'm creating karma so that I can meet them. There they are. Boom. Hello. Hi. Right. Great. Now you're going to teach me to be like you. Yay. How does someone who's coming from you teach you to be like them? How do you have the seeds to not be enlightened and see an enlightened being in front of you? That's how it works. Okay. Good luck. Right? You can think about it. You can meditate on it. So it's those two things, right? And so <laughs> this part of the text is saying is that if you don't have shamatha, none of it works. If you don't have great single pointed meditation with mental pliancy, it was a stupid translation, with mental enjoyment and body enjoyment, it's not even the right translation either. You feel good, all right? <laughs> Your body and mind feel good. <laughs> Shine, shamata. Then all of those things become possible. Your sutric practice goes through the roof and then your tantra practice opens up and then you start being able to create the karmas to see the divinity, right? Purify your, your lifetimes of ignorance and then they teach you. But you can't do it without single pointed focus because if you can't be focused, you can't hold on to it, <laughs> okay? You can't hold on to the emptiness. You can't hold on to the insight that comes from that. You just bounce off everywhere. You see, this is why the Lam Rim is so cool. And this is why one line of Lam Rim can take ages to explain. All right. And now you'll be able to translate this line. For $5, what does this word mean? Soak. Five, four, three, two. Complete? Nope. This soak means complete. This soak, soak, this one means etc. and so forth. So in this sentence is that you can't have the great realizations that come from studying emptiness, the realization of emptiness that comes from the sutras, the sutra collection. You can't have the realizations that come in the secret teachings of both Krim and Sokrim, creation stage, completion stage, etc. Okay meaning there's lots of other realizations to have, right? And then you can figure out what Pabon Kerbuche meant. All right, next sentence, moving on. All right, how about, who would like to read here? How about Jackie Brandes? Have you ever read Tibetan before? <laughs> All right, just make noises and then you'll learn it. <laughs> Oh, do. Yes, you got one word right. Congratulations. Rejoice. <laughs> non ki ting. Mm hmm. Ni zin. Mm hmm. Yanan tan e. G. 
G. Mm -hmm. Ra. Ja. That, that, that's a confusing one. Ja. Ja. Mm -hmm. Ja ing. He. Our dog. Mm hmm. Yang Chu. Lung Pa. Luke Pa. Luke Pa. Mm -hmm. Chu. Da Sa. Snod Tar. <laughs> it's not snot. No tar. <laughs> no tar. Medu. Yes. Mi Rung. Bani. Z, Z? She, she, ne. She, ne. Uh huh. She, ne. Mm hmm. Yen pa, nang mar, di, ran po. Chic. Chic. Uh huh. This is all one letter. It gets pronounced as one letter. Just go so droop. <laughs> droop? No, it means it's droop. <laughs> Almost like a D sound. Oh, droop. Yeah. <laughs> How about she? Good job. Okay. Here's a little Tibetan lesson. How do you know what letters are silent, what letters make what sounds, and things like that? Of course, you have to study it. But I want to show you guys what makes things a lot easier once you start studying. So. Here we go. Oops. All right. So. Oops. We have Drupa, right? Here's the word Drupa. Let's make this larger. How about like a 48? There we go, right? How would you know that that's actually just one letter? Right? If you look at it in the actual, oh, really? This doesn't work in the, <laughs> okay, the whiteboard doesn't work. Great, hold on a second. Never mind. Okay, Mojo is working fine. Okay, never mind. This was a dumb example that didn't work. <laughs> okay, typically letters get stacked. Something's not right with my keyboard. Okay, uh, hold on. This is really bizarre. Something's wrong with my, oh, sorry. I'm in the wrong keyboard. There it is. Okay, sorry, I just had the wrong keyboard on. So that SGR looks like that when it's in the actual Tibetan. Okay, SGR looks like that. So it's a stacked letter. It's not actually three letters. And so then the, the U actually gets put, the vowel gets attached to the bottom of the letter. But so then you know that that's actually one sound and not three sounds, like it's one letter. And so by learning the actual script, it can help you with the pronunciation. And Anastasia put it in the chat as well. So that's just a short lesson on that for you guys so you can kind of get a sense of like what letters get pronounced and what letters don't get pronounced um, and that just takes time to learn so just relax that looked confusing i'm so sorry i had the wrong keyboard on <laughs> okay i was like what this doesn't like i was like this isn't right so that that that's just a little primer so once you learn if you can learn the alphabet and then learn the ACIP input, 
it can help you very quickly learn to read. And Wordsmith teaches a great class on how to do that after every Mix Nuts on Monday and on Saturday. So I think there might come to Mix Nuts and you can grab that and you can start learning. Okay, let's go back and actually translate this paragraph now. Okay, here we are. All right, so this is just a continuation of the reasons here. All right. <laughs> One of the cool things to learn is when you see do and knock together, do means sutra, knock means tantra. Or together, we oftentimes translate it as open and secret. So when you bring the two together, do knock means the open teachings and the secret teachings together, okay, as like one unit, right? So this do at the end means want or desire. So whichever, whichever one you want to, whichever of the benefits you intend of Tingzin meditation, single pointed meditation, of the open or secret teachings, whichever of the ones you want, whichever of the, whichever the realizations that you want that we talked about, either in the open collection or the secret collection, okay. You can't do them without, you can't do them without shamatha. That is just saying it again, right? Just kind of hammering the point. Whichever one you want, you need to have shamatha. You can't achieve it without, okay? <clears throat> and then there's this really cool, really cool, I find it really cool, but you know, <laughs> this great analogy that Pabongka Rinpoche gives, all right? And he says, it's like, if you want to pour water, you can't pour water without having a pitcher to pour the water from. Okay. So if you want to pour the water, you need to have a pitcher first to pour the water. So if you don't have a pitcher, you can't pour water. Just like if you don't have shamatha, you can't have the benefits of poured water of the open and secret teachings. Like you can't, if, if your teacher is teaching you the open and secret teachings, you can't reach those benefits unless you have shamatha. You're restricting yourself from them. Just like water, you can't pour water without a pitcher. Okay. And so firstly, you need the stability of shamatha. This, this is where Tibetan gets interesting. You always have to figure out what the heck these are referring to. To achieve, achieving shamatha is the first thing, the stability of it that you must have. You must have the stability of mind, the firm stability of mind of shamatha to be able to do all of that. Not only that, <laughs> there's more. How about... Cornelia Fuchs. Let's try. No, no. Okay. Total rejected. <laughs> okay. We'll come back to you next week. You can, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the sentence next week. <laughs> Don't worry. You just make noises. How about Jolene? Yes, I'll try teacher. There is no the try. That's do or do not. <laughs> I'll do. Di yang. Di yang ko. Mm hmm. Za. Mm hmm. Ko. Ch. Ch. Oh. Pa. Dang. Mm hmm. Ta. Pa. Zam. To. Pa la ang. Tong. Nin to pai la tong ke go. Go. It's it's go. Yeah. It's 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 a different. It's a little bit different sound. Good job, Jolene. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. 
So not only that, okay, <laughs> not only is that a cool thing. Secondly, the cool thing of, of shamatha is that chupa is korsa. What does chupa mean? Dorje chupa. Dorje chupa. Scream it out. Right, cut, exactly. It cuts the sawa of core. Sawa, the root of core, samsara. Okay? It cuts, it ends, it cuts off the root of cyclic life, samsara. The two husbands in the kitchen, right? <laughs> in, you know, the irritations, it cuts that. That's what shamatha does right? Not only does it do that, right? It also helps you achieve total freedom, right? But it's not just shamatha that does that, right? The purpose of shamatha is to get to the realizations of laktong Tony Tokpe Laktong. What's Laktong? Vipassana. Vipassana, exactly. Insight, right? You take the microscope of shamatha, of your meditation, and you put it onto Laktong, you put it onto emptiness. So the realizations of emptiness that come from insight, right, are what actually gets you to these two things freedom total freedom and cuts the roots of samsara. So it's kind of like a cause and effect thing. Shamatha becomes the cause to be able to see emptiness so that you can reach these higher goals, cut off, get to total freedom by cutting off the roots of samsara. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. So basically what we're saying is, and this is why we're starting here in the Lam Rim is that without this, Nothing else is possible without a good meditation practice. Without that, without that, without that, you cannot reach these things. You cannot break the cycles of your life. You need a clear, stable, firm mind to be able to do it. Yes. Oh, so I haven't reached shamatha yet. So Tim, the four steps don't work. No, I didn't say that. Just in case you had that question. <laughs> okay. No, what it means is that the path to get to all of that is through clear, stable, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed meditation. So you can take your med, and I'm not talking about sitting on the cushion. I am talking about sitting on a cushion. But what I'm talking about in both positive and negative situations, you can apply all the teachings and apply them well, regardless of what's happening around you. If you're at a party, you can open your computer and translate. If, you're ir if irritations arise, you know how to shut them down. You know what to do and what not to do. You don't let yourself be carried away by the tsunami of your negative emotions, right? And it is a tsunami. I'm sorry. It's just a tsunami. It just happens. It happens to me all the time. You just, all of a sudden, you're like in a total different state. And you're like, how the F did that happen, right? And then you go, you're like, superhero powers, bam. You open up your superhero powers and you go, and you bring your shamatha to it. And you're like, okay, don't continue this irritation. Don't add to it. Intelligent regret. Do you see how these are all connected? Isn't it weird that this is literally connected to the last class we just had for those of you that were there? ACI 10 class four. It's all, it's all one big, it's all there, right? So when you have that, you pull out your superhero powers and you're like, dang, I am not going to continue this. I'm going to stop this right now. I'm going to cut the root of this samsara, right? My meditation has 
proven to me that emptiness is the thing or the lack of the thing <laughs> that can help us. It can help me in that moment, right? And you can only prove that by doing it yourself. And that's why we're learning shamatha. That's why we get into shamatha. Not only that, there's even more. Sweet. <laughs> Let's read the next sentence, Anastasia. De kewa la shine. De kewa. De kewa la shine. Tampo shitopte. In luki don sao por tomb wala tamporne. Cha tampo dopa drena. Pe How? Perna. Perna. Okay, um, I need to change this. Two different thoughts here. Okay, sorry. Okay, so not only that, de ke wa shine tempo shetun good te. What is good? What is generally what that word means, good te? Good really means purpose. Okay. And I actually just said it. I just need to put it in the line here. This means is that in order to reach deep insight, in order for it to arise, you have to first reach the platform of mental stability, shamatha. Okay. I already just said it. I commented on it, but it's in the text. All right. So next line here. So from seeing, from having the insight into the nature of all things, yin luke can be like the nature of all things or like reality. To see all of that, right? He keeps repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm sorry. Okay. He's just saying in different ways. In order to see the nature of reality, you need to have a firm and stable mind first. Okay, dung pour is first. So you need that firm and stable mind, nature. Nature is one way of saying stable and firm. Tenpo is another synonym of that. Okay, so it's just hammering it over and over again. You need it, you need stability, you need a firm mind, you need all of those things to get there. All right, what does perna mean? <laughs> perna. For example, okay, we have two minutes left. So I'm just going to go through this last part really quickly. All right. Munpasane debris, that's that's a weird word, debris. Sok dawala marmes gawadang lungi mi kupa, kupa ni sok gupartayen. Okay. So, for example, if you're in the dark, Okay. And you're and you're trying to see a painting on the wall. Okay. You're trying to see something on the wall that can't be illuminated by it's dark. You can't actually see it. You have to bring a light to it. So back in the day, they didn't have, you know, they didn't go like this. Right. <laughs> right. Back in the day, they had candles, right? So it's in the dark. You're trying to look at a tanka on the wall. You're trying to look at Madhurgini and you can't see her, right? So you light a candle and you walk over to it, right? And so there's two qualities of a candle that's necessary for it to illuminate, right? You light the candle, but there's a window open and it's blowing the flame. And the flame is doing this, right? It's flickering. Are you gonna be able to see that picture clearly? No, because the candle's flickering. If you've ever had a candle and it's going like this, it doesn't illuminate. Although the same amount of light is there, the light's being scattered. So in order to see something that's dark, you need to have a, a light from a candle that's steady. 
no wind. Hatha Yoga Pradipika people, get it? The wind is still. So you need to have a firm, stable mind that's not to be able to see things, right? That should be enough for you to say, look, this is why I need to meditate. This is why I need to learn this. Your mind is like a candle being blown in the wind, right? That's what our mind is like all day long, right? Of course, it can't illuminate anything. Of course, you can't see samsara things. Of course, you can't see the cycles. Of course, you can't see emptiness because your mind is all over the place, right? Just like a candle in the wind. Oh, God, did I just start singing Elton John in my head? <laughs> I'm going to put that on the playlist <laughs> for next time. Candle in the wind, okay? But if you still your if you still the wind, then the candle can illuminate the darkness. What's the darkness? The things you haven't seen before, the things that are coming from you. For you Hatha Yoga Pradipika people who are taking the course right now, stilling the wind is not just closing the window. It's also stilling the inner winds, stilling the winds in your side channels, moving the winds into your central channel having the winds in your central channel move like a still incense stick burning and the wind, the smoke is just moving up completely still, not moving. Here's an exercise for you. Burn an incense, watch the, watch the smoke. If the smoke is moving, there's wind. If, the sm if your prana is moving, it can't be in the central channel in an ignorant way. And so you're not going to be able to see things. You're not going to be able to see your mind. You're not going to be able to see any of that stuff. You need to still the winds. That's why Pabonka Rinpoche talked about a candle in the dark. He's not only talking about the obvious example of a candle. He's also talking about completion stage. Okay if you cared. So it's all there in the Lam Rim. You just have to find it and see it. Cool. We're not, we'll, we'll leave that last sentence for next week. And there's billions of other sentences, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you all very much for joining this week's installment of Living Lam Rim. <laughs> and, um, Yeah, what I'd like you to meditate on this week. I highly suggest adding meditations in five minutes a day. Just five minutes. If you can do six, do six. If you can do 10, do 10, right? But in your meditation, don't try to, if you're just starting, do no more than 10 minutes and then add a minute a week. Um, but this week, I'd like you to meditate on if you see somebody as a teacher, you know, whether they're like a piano teacher or a school teacher or your scripture teacher, <laughs> invite them into the meditation and try to see them as coming from your seeds. They're not out there by themselves. In what way are they coming from your seeds? What qualities do you see in them that you like? And how are they coming from what you've done in the past? What did you do in the past to create that good quality? Because it didn't come there by itself. And what could you do to turn them into an, a divine being, an enlightened being that could come to you, right? Don't get attached to the form. Don't get attached to the form. Don't get attached to the form, okay? How can a, an, a divine being come to you? And meditate on that for 10 minutes. Yay. Cool. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you for staying up late in Asia. Thank you for joining early on the East Coast of the United States. 
Thank you all very much for joining. Thank you, tech. Thank you, translators. Have a lovely, lovely day, and let's say goodbye. Thank you, 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 Thank you,